Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson, and we have a, a lot of questions this week covering a variety of Texas Tech recruiting and sports topics, so I'm going to dive right into these questions. The first one comes from L.B. Manns, who asks, How does Texas Tech track and field team look this year? National championship this year? Well, the men's team is top five right now, and the women's team is top seven. So, fourth and seventh, I believe. So, I mean, yeah. Obviously, if you're in the top 10, you have a chance to uh, compete for the national title. And that's what Texas Tech track does under Wes Kitley is they compete for Big 12 and national titles. And, I mean, a lot of the Texas Tech sports like baseball, basketball, uh, that's the spot they're in now. And, and tennis, they golf is up there. They, you know, they're a really good program as well. I mean, track is no different. Wes Kitley is is as good as anybody out there in the country. And, of course, Tech recently won a uh, national championship a couple years ago. So, absolutely. Do I think they will for sure? I don't know. We'll have to see. But they definitely have a lot of athletes in a variety of events, which is why they're ranked so high. So, yeah, Texas Tech has the opportunity to win a national championship. I'm not prepared. I honestly don't know enough about everybody um, to say, oh, they're going to win a national title. But, I mean, I'm telling you there's a chance. That's for sure. Better than just a chance. So, yeah, I think Texas Tech has an opportunity to uh, hang some more banners from, from track this year. Seaballs20 wants to know, did Tech make up any ground on Arizona with K.J. Lewis with his visit over the weekend? Yeah, Austin Massey are you know, very, very good um, recruit basketball. And honestly, he's helping out with football too. But our recruiting analyst, Austin Massey, he uh, caught up with K.J. And yeah, the, the visit went very well. He said he loved the atmosphere, the family atmosphere the coaching staff created for him and his mom. Um, he loved the facilities. He said the fans lived up to the hype. He said he was expecting a lot from the fans just through social media and reputation, but that um, they held up in that he was really impressed with uh, Red Raider Nation, which I'm not surprised at that. And then the fact that 2000, in this, this probably is overplayed as a reason for why a guy commits to a place or doesn't, um, but it doesn't hurt anything. The fact that you know, one of his best friends, he called him his brother uh, in the interview with Austin, is Drew Steffi, 2023 commit fellow four-star. Um, so the fact that all you add all those in there, and absolutely they help their cause. Uh, KJ recently released his top eight, and Tech was in it, along with Arizona, which is, um, I think it's basically they're about the same distance from El Paso, where KJ uh, lives, but uh, you know he, he has some some history in Arizona. He, as mentioned before, the Arizona's his dream school growing up. So, I I definitely think Arizona's in the mix. But I think Tech has made up some ground, and I think it's between those two. Um, like I said, I know he just released the top eight, but I think if you really look at it and what he's saying, um, I think Arizona and Tech is where KJ Lewis is going to end up. And if, for those who don't know who he is, um, he's a top 25 recruit according to 25 or 24 seven sports. And uh, he's 6'4", 190-pound guard. He's a great two-way player. The scheme, the style of play at Texas Tech is perfect for him. Um, I think he would be a great addition and a great fit in Mark Adams' program. So hopefully they land him. And, man, uh, Tech's already got the number 16 class uh, for the 2023 uh, cycle. Number one in the Big 12 and 16th in the country. So you add K.J. Lewis to Drew Steffi, a couple four-stars, Couple big time prospects, a couple top seventy prospects. I mean, man, what a what a great start to that class that would be. But uh, definitely something to keep your eye on is uh, KJ Lewis's uh, recruitment for sure. Nas Raider asks, "What is your opinion thoughts on the whole thirty million dollar uh, NIL deal at a and to secure the number one class?" He said, "Was it the money or was it the love of the university, as Jimbo Fisher wants us to believe?" Well, <clears throat> of course, the money played a big part. There's no doubt. Money played a big part in um, securing the number one class. But A&M has been recruiting well for a while. And I think there's probably some truth in that some of those guys love A&M. And, um, I, you know, it's it would be disingenuous to ignore either one. But I, if I had to point to just one factor, yeah. I mean, $30 million is a heck of an investment in one recruiting class. And, you know, I'm... I'm, I don't like the Aggies. <laughs> Just, I'm not ever going to like the Aggies. I'm biased that way. You know, I try and call it like it is. Having gone to Tech, I'm never going to like a &M. But you have to at least, and I know some people are like, nope, but you have to at least, in my opinion, tip the cap to um, 
the, the level of basically the, the fact that they care, uh, that they're willing to invest that amount of money. Um, you look at them breaking off from the Big 12, away from UT, and going to the SEC, forging their own path, all the money they've invested in the facilities, the money they invested in Jimbo Fisher. He has a heck of a contract. He's one of the highest paid coaches. And then $30 million in one class. And then my final thought on this is that's a lot of pressure. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, I don't know what the amounts are in terms of like the off the books money that not just, I'm not saying accusing A&M necessarily. I'm just saying in general, big time college football has invested. Has it been 30 million? Has it been 50 million? I, I, really, I really don't know. I don't know if there's a way to, to know. Somebody out there probably knows about the program, their program, if, if they're, they were the ones investing off the books, but I wonder how, how different it is. If the money's really that much more the NIL or about the same or less, who knows, you know, um, probably not less, but uh, it's interesting to think about. And I don't know how you'd ever really be able to quantify that or if anybody would, but uh, interesting times we live in with this NIL, NIL stuff for sure. PX Raider asks, does anyone else in the conference have a tougher non-conference football schedule for 2022 than Texas Tech? Yeah, I had two schools that stood out to me. Uh, Texas, they play... Uh, Louisiana Monroe, and Alabama, and UTSA. So that's pretty tough. Now, they're not playing Alabama and Tuscaloosa, but I'm sure it's a neutral site game. Um, you know, While Texas Tech plays Murray State at home, Houston at home, and then goes to NC State. So that is that is pretty tough, but I Texas is at least as tough, in my opinion. And then TCU has an interesting one. At Colorado, Tarleton State, and then at SMU, who, of course, has beat them the last two years. And then you have the whole coaching change thing. Dykes going over to TCU from SMU, so that will be interesting. And, you know, at Colorado, I'm not saying Colorado like they're world beaters, but still, you're traveling to a Power 5 school, you know, to play them there. So, um that's on par with tech schedule. Everybody else, they have like maybe like one really tough game and two cupcakes, so um, or just something where it doesn't it doesn't quite measure up to tech schedule. But obviously, Houston at home, which you should win that game. I mean, you've dominated Houston. I don't remember. I don't know what the winning streak is, but it's it's significant. So you should win that game. But then, of course, at NC State, they're a top twenty-five program. Basically, that's a tough place to play. That's going to be a a tough game for Texas Tech for sure. Next question comes from Red Raider Stat, who says his cable provider has channels for the Big Ten, SEC, ACC, and Pac-12. Is there going to be a Big 12 channel anytime soon? Yeah, I think the easy answer for me, at least, is as soon as uh, UT goes to the SEC, that will open up the opportunity for a Big 12 channel because this Longhorn Network has really been the death. You could look all around, you can make all these arguments, say this or that, but really... The death of the Big 12, or at least the crippling of the Big 12, because it's not dead yet, uh, has been the Longhorn Network. And, you know, you lost Nebraska, Nebraska, A&M, Colorado, all those, in large part due to the Longhorn Network. So, I, in my mind, when Texas leaves, unless there's some contract or some stipulation that I'm unaware of, the Big 12, they should this should already be in the works, honestly. Um, and... That should happen immediately after Texas leaves. Next question comes from Radio PD, who says, How much will Texas Tech gain in the recruiting rankings when the four or seven players who don't have 24-7 rankings uh, get their updates? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. I know everybody's so in a hurry. Like, why aren't these guys ranked? Why aren't these guys ranked? Why is 24-7 sports behind? Well, first off, look, you got to understand the timeline for us has sped up because normally Tech only has like one commit right now. I mean, just it's the truth. Um, one or two. And they have 13. And we're still 10 months away from the early signing period, which is the sign, National Signing Day for all intents and purposes. But still, 10 months in the recruiting world is a long time. And then you have complications from this class when they were younger, not getting to see them at the camps and some of the things, the, the, the spring evaluations due to COVID. So I'm not making excuses. Honestly, 24-7 hasn't been in a big rush because they're trying to get it right, not just throw some rankings out there. And I'm not even insinuating other... Uh, recruiting ranking services aren't getting it right. I'm just saying I would rather have the place that I represent get it right than rush to get them out there. Now, that being said, uh, there's been a couple of, just since this question was asked, there's been a couple of guys who have received rankings. I think most no, notably is quarterback commit Jake Strong out of Justin Northwest. You know, uh, he's a three-star guy. Um, he's a top 100 Texas guy. 
I believe he was ranked the number 33 quarterback in the country. So he got his rating. And, uh, you know, it was funny. It was so two guys got, got ranked or got rated for 24-7 sports, and they went up one spot to fifth nationally and tops in the Big 12. And then to this morning I looked, and Baylor had already overtaken them for their guys getting ratings. So there's still several guys for Texas Tech to get rated, but the rest of the country is going to get rated too. So I still consider or expect – I had said months ago that Tech would sign a top 25 class. I'm willing to say I think Tech signs a top 20 class, this uh, 2023 class, which that would be very impressive. And Tech hadn't done that. I don't know when that was, how long ago it was, at least a decade. And uh, I really expect that for a couple reasons. One, they're getting really highly rated guys. Um, two, just Joey McGuire, is, you know, his connections, he's amazing, and his whole staff, you know, amazing recruiters. Um, there's a lot of momentum for Texas Tech right now. And then McGuire went on record with our 24-7 sports director of recruiting, Steve Wolfong, and saying that their plan is to sign 25 high school guys. So that would be amazing. That would go a long way towards this class being rated in the top 20. And I, I would be, I'm going to be disappointed if it's not, to be honest. Like, I really expect it, it to happen. So that's really exciting. J.J. Matador asks, uh, Kamar Wheaton, Cole Spencer, Kari Coleman, and O'Shawn Mathis, any interest in any of those guys uh, at all? Well, Texas Tech, their 2022 class and transfer portal, all that, like their numbers are pretty much set. But they're still looking to add one or two defense alignment. They, need, they want some defense alignment. I don't. O'Shawn Mathis released his top five and Tech wasn't in it. Kari Coleman is another guy from TCU transfer. Um Obviously, with Zarnell Fitch, the former defensive line coach at TCU coming over. I think there's an opportunity there. He's an edge rusher. I don't know if Tech really wants like bigger guys, interior guys to help out, or they're just looking to add as many guys along the defensive line they can and coming guys coming off the edge. So, But that would be a guy that, uh, out of those four, right, are the most likely. I don't think they need another running back, though it's hard to turn down a former five-star Alabama transfer. Um, I, 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 what they really need are defensive, or what they're looking for for sure, defensive linemen to uh, finish out that class. Anonymous says, how many four-star commits do, does Texas Tech end up in 2023? And this is the final question, by the way. Yeah, that's a good question, and it depends on how you uh, look at it. I mean, Jamari Davis, uh, the dude from Clarendon, he uh, he's going to play safety at Texas Tech. He's listed as an athlete because, he, I mean, he's a multi-sport star there. Uh, he plays all over the field on the gridiron um, in all three phases. So, But he told me that he's probably going to play safety. He's rated as a four-star safety on rivals at least, um, and he hasn't received uh, ratings yet. But I expect him to either be a low four-star or a high three-star when he is rated. So, <clears throat> I mean, there's another guy. Um, if, you, if you're just going by composite, then I would say, I would say five. Expect... Five four stars. I think Avion Carter is definitely in play out of Amarillo, Tascosa. There's some other guys. It'll be interesting to see how Jake Strong, the quarterback I mentioned earlier, him and some of them, and like Zach Kitley, how they recruit some, maybe some receivers, maybe get a four star receiver here or there. Um, so I, I'm going to say five, which I mean, you're talking about three signing classes going for Tech to get five four stars. So that would be a huge haul. Again, I expect this to be a top 20 class. And uh, there's just more belief and more momentum behind this football program than I've seen in the eight-plus years I've been here in Lubbock covering Texas Tech exclusively. So Joey McGuire, all those Blanchard, uh, Kane Perry, Zach Kidley, uh, Zarnell Fish for sure should get love. Emmett Jones is the man. All those guys have it working right now on the recruiting trail. They're, they're hitting it hard, and uh, uh, those dividends are going to be quite sweet. I'm really enjoy co enjoying covering – Texas Tech football recruiting, and uh, I, I think five is a really good number, five four-stars. We'll see what they end up with. Maybe they'll obliterate that. Um, we'll see where all the ratings, these get, some of these guys are, are rated when 24-7, uh, you know, adds those guys, their ratings. So it'll be interesting to watch for sure, and like I said, it sure is fun covering Texas Tech football recruiting again. So with that, I want to thank you for watching, and until next time.